I'm Ben from Broyle King. Uh, this is actually part one of our Do More series. It's meant to be an instructional series of videos that we're going to hopefully do weekly. And uh, we're here to teach you how to do more with your Broyle King grill and your Broyle King grill accessories. So today, myself, our very talented camera person, Caitlin, and Jeremy over there, we're, uh, we're going to show you some things you can do with your rotisserie on your Broyle King grill and really how it works. So you just bought your Broyle King. It came with a rotisserie. So what? How do I use this thing? What are the what are the tips, the tricks, and the techniques we need to know to use it to its best? To get that perfect rotisserie chicken, that perfect prime rib, that perfect rotisserie leg of lamb. So let's, let's kind of start with what it is. So you got the grill, it came with a rotisserie. It's got this knob on the side, it's got this swingy weight thing. We've got two skewers on here, if it's, uh, if it's a Regal 490 like this. The bigger grills come with more of these forks. And then over here we got a motor. But let's, let's look a little bit more closely. So this, this is the full rotisserie rod, and it's kind of the main piece of the rotisserie kit. So this handle is also the screw that locks the counterbalance, which is what this thing is here, in place. Another lock ring right beside it. We've got a bushing here that lets the rotisserie spin easily in the casting on the barbecue. Two heavy duty forks to lock your meat in place. You don't want it flopping around inside the grill and getting hung up. You want it to actually sit in there firmly and rotate as it cooks. And then the motor on the side here, it's a, it's a deluxe, what we call auto reverse motor. So if something does get hung up in your grill, the motor actually makes it spin completely the opposite way. It's kind of the anatomy of the grill. Mounts onto this handy bracket. When you're not using your rotisserie motor, you just take it off put it inside for storage. So, put it back on there. We'll go back to this. All right, so when you're working with a rotisserie, cooking grids in. I'm leaving this one in just for some comparison stuff when we're talking about cooking. But when you're cooking with a rotisserie, take your cooking grids out. So, I've removed this main grid. We're gonna take out the warming rack. We don't need that either. Set that off to the side. And then basically your meat's gonna get a chance to spin freely in here in front of that rear burner if your grill came with one. It's not completely essential, but it's gonna be the best experience with the rotisserie chicken. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a bit. And then you're gonna to wanna to take a drip pan, I believe I've got one right here, and you're gonna to wanna to put it underneath the meat directly below where it sit inside the grill. So when you're getting to do a rotisserie cook, a couple things that I want you to be aware of because it's, it's really important when you're rotisserie grilling. Take your rotisserie rod first before you put any meat on it and put it into the grill. So, see the end there? Square end, square fitting on a rotisserie motor. We want to slide it right in so that it sits deep into the rotisserie motor. That's what's going to hold it in place and help it spin. But what keeps it in there? Well, that bushing piece that we talked about earlier that sits over here, you want that thing locked in nice and tight. Now, see where I've got the screw? If I were to put the screw on the other side, there's a chance that it could rub on the inside of the casting here. So we're going to put the screw to the inside I'm going to take a handy screwdriver and I'm going to put a little bit of force on the rotisserie rod and then pull the bowling, sorry, pull the bushing and then tighten it up like this. And that way the bushing pushes on the rotisserie rod to keep it inside the motor. As it's spinning, there's no chance that it can back up and fall out because you don't want this to stop spinning when you're cooking. So once I've got that locked in place, we can kind of talk about step two. So we've got a rotisserie rod that's ready to go. We're going to take this fork off. Are we going to put the meat on? No way. I guess. You want to take your other rotisserie fork and you want to figure out where center is. So Caitlin, let's take a look at this burner here. All the way over here on the left, we've got ports. And they go all the way over to where the spark generator would be here on the right. If we're cooking one chicken, we want to have that sit in the center. It's going to look great. It's where it's basically going to cook best. So we're going to take our rotisserie rod, we're going to put it back in. Drop it in like so find kind of where the center is and we'll lock in that first fork. Because once that's locked in, we know where roughly center of the grill is. So then we can take this thing and when we head over to Jeremy there to get everything set up, we know where that chicken's going to sit on the left. As soon as he puts that fork on to the right side, everything's locked in place and ready to spin. That's the grill. That's how the rotisserie works. But what else do we need? You know, we've got grill accessories here. So. This rod's gonna get hot while you're cooking. Since it's gonna get hot, you need some heavy leather grilling mitts or any heavy grilling mitts that you're gonna have that are gonna actually take the heat of this when you take it off the grill. 
We want to baste that chicken with goodness. So, we need a basting set. Nice bowl, good basting brush to go along with it. We need, as we saw on the grill, we need a drip pan. So we've got a handy drip pan. And in the Broiler King line, we've got them in either the disposable aluminum pans or good reusable stainless pan. This one here, you can actually hook up to with the, uh, the grid lifter. It's my favorite to use. We obviously need a cutting board for prep and carving. And we're working with poultry, so you need a thermometer. Those are the tools that you're gonna need for this. But what about spice? So we've got a full line of Broil King spices that you can use. We've got a barbecue rub, we've got a KC barbecue rub, we've got a perfect steak. You're gonna need that as your base. And then anything you build on top of it. So when we're basting the chickens later, we've got a mixture of our perfect barbecue rub, a little bit of thyme, a little bit of garlic, some olive oil. We're gonna baste that onto the chickens as they go. Add a little bit of flavor to them. All right, so we're gonna go over to Jeremy here. He's gonna do all the actions. I'm gonna do the narration um, and get this chicken ready to go. So we've got that first fork in place. We've got the bushing set in place. The counterbalance here is gonna be a bit of a pain. So since we don't need it yet, I'm gonna take all of the tension off it and it can just spin freely. Now, the first thing he's gonna to wanna to do with this chicken, he's got it out, he's got it cleaned, he's taken off any of the store-bought ties that are on it. Um, when you're looking at it, when they butcher the chicken, there's gonna be some areas that might have a little bit extra feathers. So usually that'll be at the top. So you take a look at the top of the bird, maybe there's some extra feathers, extra skin up there. You can trim any of that off if you'd like. At the bottom, and I'll just wait for him to do this. At the bottom, when they go into the cavity of the chicken, you end up with these two flaps of skin at the bottom. There's a lot of chicken fat on it. It will never cook up as crispy and delicious as any of the rest of the skin on the bird. So what we'll generally do is we'll just cut that off. So we'll take off that entire flap on both sides. All right. Now the next thing you want to do is think about how you want to flavor this bird. Um, it's pretty common to stuff it with some citrus and you can do that on a rotisserie as well. Get some nice citrus flavor on the inside of the, the bird. It adds to the storytelling too when you're, when you're cooking for your guests. But what we're going to do today, we're going to keep it simple. So we're going to rub the outside of the bird, but first we're going to start by rubbing underneath the skin. So what he'll do is he's going to take his fingers, he's going to separate the skin from the breast of the chicken, and then he's going to rub some of that barbecue rub up underneath it, all the way up to the top, and basically fill that cavity with, uh, with a little bit of olive oil and some barbecue rub. Now what this does is it gets the flavor directly onto the, the meat itself. Uh, the skin makes a pretty good barrier that prevents a lot of that flavor from getting to the, uh, the meat below. So if you cook a chicken that's got that beautiful skin and the skin peels away after you're done cooking it, whoever ends up with that tasty piece of skin has most of the flavor stuck to it. If you do it this way, you've got flavor on the meat and flavor on the skin, just builds it up in layers. So he's gonna rub a bunch of the barbecue rub and some olive oil onto the breast, between the skin, and then he's gonna rub up the outside of the chicken as well. All right, and while he's doing that, I'm gonna talk about cook times. Uh, one of the biggest questions I get when it comes to cooking chickens is, how long does it take? Is it an hour, hour and a half? And that varies greatly. Uh, I've, I've cooked chicken throughout North America, a um, bunch of spots in Europe, Depending on the chickens, that cook time can vary greatly. A very lean chicken cooks quick, and a fatty chicken takes a lot more time to cook. It's got a lot more moisture. So always go by doneness. Um, when that chicken hits, I like to say 170 because it's, it's the easiest number to just pinpoint for most people. When it hits 170 in the thickest part of the thigh or the thickest part of the breast, it's ready to serve. And it's gonna be nice and juicy on your rotisserie. Anything past that and you're getting into potentially dry chicken, anything below that, and you don't wanna be serving anyone something that's raw, especially in any of those areas that are tied tight or pin tight on the rotisserie. So always check the temperature throughout. When you get close to a recommended time around an hour and a half, um, check that. If it's done early, great. If it takes longer, who cares? The perfect chicken will be ready when it's ready. So he's got this all rubbed up. We've already got a rotisserie pork, uh, fork pinned in place. Now he's gonna start pinning the chicken uh, onto the rotisserie. So if you want to grab the rotisserie right there, Jeremy. All right, so you can go in through either the head or the butt on the chicken. Doesn't matter which one's first. When he goes in through the butt this way, he's going to go partially in, and then he's going to pick up the other fork without taking the chicken off the board. You want to keep the chicken on the board. It keeps your counter nice and clean. So just kind of work your way through slowly. Don't stab yourself in the hand. And then as he starts to get into the chicken, the, the bottom end where the legs are is a little bit more tricky because you want to use those forks to trap the legs. Because if you trap the legs with the forks, you don't actually have to tie them with any of the twine. 
And then a quick tip on twine, I'm just gonna put this in front of the camera here. If you pre-cut your twine, you don't have to handle this with those chicken hands. So pre-cut your twine and you don't end up with raw chicken guck on your, on your bolts of twine. So you can see how he's got the legs pinned and then he's just gonna use the other fork to hold the top. And when you're pinning into the top, just pin as much of the breast and body cavity as you can. If you can get three forks into the top of the chicken, that's perfect because it's lots and lots of hold. Perfect. You see the way that he's got it? The two short forks go between the breastbone and right behind the spine, and then the two main forks go right into the chicken breast, so you got lots of hold with this thing. And when he puts it together, he's pinning it tight, but not too tight. You're not completely squishing the chicken, but it's got a nice hold. So, Jeremy, just give that thing a shake and kind of show how tight it's on there. So the first thing we see that's wobbling is what? We got wobbly wings, so we've got to tie those down. Now if he ties them on the board here, he could just finagle this underneath and tie it. But the best place to do it is just right on the grill. So, Jeremy come around with the chicken and we'll just tie this thing up on the grill itself. And you notice we got the counterbalance that's just still swinging around freely. So we're going to use it in just a second. So just drop it in place, but don't put it into the motor. Okay. This is the next thing to watch. I'm gonna spin the rod a little bit here, and the chicken is gonna to wanna to slump to where it's heaviest. That's where this counterbalance comes in. So now that we know where the chicken's heaviest, on this, this one spot where that wing's just hanging down, I'll spin it a whole bunch around here to see if we go back to there again. Yeah, that's the heaviest part. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the counterbalance, we're gonna go directly opposite, so straight up, and then we're just gonna tighten it up and then see if that changes it. Oh, now the counterbalance is the heaviest part, so we gotta offset it just a little bit less. So we move that back, lock in place, give her a spin. Pretty close, pretty close. That's pretty good. All right, so now that we've got a good counterbalance against the weight of the chicken so that it spins freely, and this is also lets your motor run for much, much longer. Uh, off-balance loads are not very friendly to a rotisserie motor, so if you can get that load balanced as much as possible, that's that's super key. So now that we've got our balance, we're gonna set the chicken into the motor, drop the bushing down in here so that we you know we've got it in the right spot. And then Jeremy, I'll give you some twine. You can tie the wings against the body. If you don't tie the wings up, as they get cooked, the connective tissue starts to break down, any of the fat starts to break down, and there's not a lot holding those wings in place. So tie them against the body, holds them in place, lets them cook up nice and crispy. The tips don't dry out when you do it this way also. And you just end up with chicken wings that are serv servable rather than just sitting in the bottom of your grill. All right, so our stunt chicken's ready to go. Usually we'll take a knife and trim off a little bit of the extra string here, and this thing's just ready to spin. So, now let's go over to a grill that's actually cooking. We can talk about some new things. All right, so on the Imperial here, and we've turned off the hood fan because it's incredibly noisy and we're filming a video, but on the Imperial, we've got two chickens that are rotisserie grilling. They've been on here for a while. We've got our drip pan underneath. We've got the rotisserie burner going nice and low in the back, just putting a perfect golden brown on them. And a couple of things that you'll notice. So on these birds, we tied them. We tied the wing, just like we did on the, uh, on the test bird over there. We tied the wings and the legs between these two together. And then since we didn't pin the legs totally at the bottom, we just put another uh, length of twine on them to hold them in place. So these two chickens here are held in place by two forks and the fact that they're basically wedged together. So as you spin this around, kind of watch what's happening. We've got one chicken that's facing up and we have another chicken that's facing down. When we were talking about the counterbalance, the heaviest part of the chicken is usually the breast meat. If you mount it perfectly onto the uh, on the rotisserie rod, the breast meat's going to be the heaviest part and it wants to go to the bottom. So to try to balance it as much as possible before we set the counterbalance, we put one breast down and one breast up on this chicken. That way it spins as freely as possible as it goes. Then you use the counterbalance to kind of pick up the rest. You don't have anything flopping around in the grill where you're cooking. We've got this locked in with two skewers, but because this is the Imperial, it actually comes with four, you can use more skewers on this grill. We're just using two to show you as an example because you can cook two rotisserie chickens on pretty much anything in our lineup that has rotisserie. So, nice golden brown on the outside, but as I said before, we've got a basting set with some thyme and some garlic. And as this cooks, we're gonna take some of this, and we're just gonna baste it onto the outside. And you baste it where you can see that it's starting to dry out. So 
If you see any areas that are starting to get a little bit of black on them, a little bit too much golden brown, just doesn't look as glossy as it could, just kind of gently baste it. And what you do is scoop as much of the garlic and thyme as you can in the spice. Can you see that? Perfect. And then you just kind of dab it onto the outside of the chicken. And this will roll around on the outside. You do this uh, up until about 15 minutes from the end of, of your cook. So you want to, don't want to do this right before you're finished. You actually want to get some heat into it afterwards. And then you basically just baste the chickens and it helps them get that much more golden brown. Adds a little bit more flavor to the outside. We can see the drip pan below. So on our test grill over there, we already had the drip pan in place. When you do a drip pan, don't fill it up on the counter and bring it to the grill. It's an easy way to splash it around and spill it. So when you're getting the grill preheated, when you're getting everything ready to go, put the pan in place. Put some citrus, put some onions, put some color and flavor into there. Some great aromatics that have a smell. And then add in some juice or water, whatever you want to put into the drip pan, while it's sitting on the grill. Prevents it from sloshing around, prevents you from spilling it, just makes it that much easier to work with. Always keep an eye on your drip pan. Like I said at the start, you don't have to cook with just a rotisserie burner. You can rotisserie grill on any Broil King grill, as long as you've got a rotisserie kit. So the, the rotisserie burner gives you some of the best results. This, this beautiful golden brown that you see on the outside, you're getting that from the direct radiant heat that's coming off of that burner. It's not very intense, but it's giving you this perfect golden brown. But any of these main burners can be turned on to rotisserie cook your chicken. Now here's what you're gonna experience. If you were to use the left and right burner, none of that heat's directly below the pan, so you've got a lot of convective heat that just rolls around in the cook box and cooks these birds. You get a lot of this in golden brown, it just takes a little bit longer. If you use all four burners, you're putting heat directly below the pan, which means you're constantly boiling water and you're losing moisture. Now that's okay, because it's keeping the chicken nice and moist, but you gotta keep an eye on this, because if it goes dry, then it starts to burn, and that burn turns into some smoke, and that smoke just doesn't taste great stuck to the outside of your chicken. So always keep an eye on your drip pan if you're gonna use your main burners. Other reasons you'd use these main burners, you don't have time to wait. You're pressed for time. You want those chickens sooner than later. You wanna cook them faster, so turn on some of your main burners. You've already got one going in the back. It has lots of power. So it's, it's very easy to overshoot your target. You don't want to cook a chicken up at 500 degrees. You want to cook a chicken between 350 and 400 degrees. So don't overshoot your target. Don't use too much power. But you can use this to give you a faster start. You, know, you just put the chicken on and oops, I didn't preheat the grill. You can preheat pretty quickly by turning on some main burners and the rotisserie burner at the same time. Just remember, watch your drip pan. Don't burn your skin and take your time because the inside's gotta to cook to the appropriate doneness temperature to make sure that everybody's eating safe, healthy chicken. And now I gotta do a recap here. So we know how to mount the rotisserie. We know how to control the burners. We know why you would use a drip pan and the accessories that we need to make sure that we're doing the, the best rotisserie chicken. So this is where we get to the challenge portion. So we're starting a new thing called Searing Saturdays. And part of Searing Saturdays is We've got this beautiful rotisserie chicken, but we want to see what you're doing. Knowing what you know now about how to set this up, make your best rotisserie chicken, take a picture of it, post it, tag us, and uh, maybe we can send you some rotisserie grilling accessories to keep you going, keep you going with your broil king, creating new content. But like I said, this is a weekly session. We'll be doing it mainly to teach, to show you all the great things that you can do with broil king grill and help you do more. My name's Ben, I'm the culinary director here at broil king, and thanks for watching.